Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, everything really, depending on the guest. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Ramoliotis, on social media. You know me as PD Beats. You will recognize my guest from a show on DC Universe and the CW called Stargirl. He plays, well, we find out that he is Sportsmaster. We're with Neil Hopkins. Neil, welcome to Pop Turnitin, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. Um, right off the bat, huge kind of, because, you know, Stargirl is not like other shows where, you know, you like we're kind of waiting every week for a new episode. Um, and this last episode is a big one because, you know, the whole world finds out that you know you're not just a guy who owns a gym or you're not just like a, uh, yeah. a very um involved parent of a student athlete you're also a super villain yeah yeah it's really cool they uh the way that they just sort of teased it out you know i mean like like, like we were discussing before it's like when they announced that i got the part you know they said lawrence croc slash sportsmaster and anybody that knows jsa that yeah. knows the ISA knows that Lawrence Crock is, you know, Crusher is Sportsmaster. So, but a lot of people don't know that that world, you know, the Golden Age DC comics. So it was cool that a lot of people, I guess, were surprised, like, oh my God, that's Sportsmaster. Now, but, you know, were you into sports growing up yourself? I was, you know, I wasn't like a super jock or anything like that. Um, but I, I mean, I played a lot of sports. I played tennis. I played football for six years. I played basketball for 10 years, you know, all swim team, everything. So, Absolutely. but I wasn't like a star athlete or anything like that. I was an actor. I was in, <laughs> so I was in drama for the acting stuff. I mean, cause I like to call that, you know, storytelling, you know, whether it's the acting the writing aspect of it, the directing, it's all storytelling. So when did Neil Hopkins decide that he wanted to be a storyteller? When did that start for you? I mean, I got into theater when I was in high school. Um, I, 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 I took a, a theater class and my uh, um, theater teacher who also directed all the plays, he asked me to audition for uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat by Andrew Lloyd Webber. And I, I got a part in the chorus. I had been a singer like my whole life. I had always sang, not professionally or anything, but just, you know, that was something. I had a good voice as a kid. and. So it was something my parents encouraged and my dad always wanted us to, you know, sing in choir and stuff like that. But then I was able to sort of parlay that into doing musicals. And then I was just hooked. It was so much fun. I'd been doing sports for a year and a half in high school. And then I was, you know, I just was, I hadn't really hit my growth spurt yet. And so I was like a, a boy among men. And I found theater and I was just like, oh, this is where it's at. Because I went to an all boys school and the, the only after school activity or extracurricular activity where there were women girls from other schools was theater and it was the best. it was like the, it was such a scam i was like this is great and so we would have all these you know beautiful girls from all these neighboring schools come and try out for the plays and it was just a, bl a blast i loved the camaraderie of it i loved everything about it and then i when i went to college i got into it and i did musicals and then i became a theater major and then i decided i wanted to um to pursue it and so i i auditioned for graduate school and and uh and i got in and i went to american conservatory theater it's where i met my wife we've been married for 12 years she's an actor as well obviously and uh you know it's it's been years years so it's it, it was a, a high school sort of decision have you gone to work on a project with your wife yet um, we've done our own stuff. Like we've made our own short films and we, we made a pilot a few years ago. We've been on the same shows, but not at the same time. Oh, but wow. No, that's funny. Yeah. Like when you, when you do the rounds as an actor and you do a lot of guest stars, you know, the, if you stick around long enough, you know, you're going to get on just about every crime show. You're going to get on just about just about every procedural drama there is. And so we've, we've been on like NCIS. We've both been on Charmed. We've both been on, um, uh, I can't remember. There's a, a bunch of shows, but you know, when you kick around long enough, you, you, uh, you sort of make the rounds and, and you're bound to crisscross with other people. For sure. Well, no, it's funny you say that because, um, yeah, like your IMDb, like you've been, you've been in a lot of really cool shows that so you've, you've done a lot of work over the past couple of years or the last years. Um, it's one of those things too, where, 
um, you obviously you said you were into like singing, and you also got to play a singer in one of yeah. the biggest shows of all time. Yeah, but I didn't get to sing. <laughs> you didn't get. <laughs> So, so that wasn't that wasn't you say I mean I remember that song. No man, I would have done a I would have done a much better job. Of you that. are uh, everybody. I remember yeah, that they song. Had, they had pre. I was I was so stoked because I was I was like oh my god I get to play a rock star we get to do a concert I get to sing you know and I thought well I'd be singing in post production you know they'd have me come in and loop it and then I and then I realized oh they're they're really going to use the playback for for the episode <laughs> and so they had like pre recorded the track it sounds nothing like me. And, uh, <laughs> and I just I just lip I I just had to lip sync. It's it. crazy yeah. that like till this day like I remember that song, like oh yeah, it's it's like an earworm. Yeah. <laughs> no, like and the best part about that too was it's like when we first meet Charlie, he's talking about his band. Yeah, and then like and then like we then see you guys play that song. Yeah, so we didn't well, have to just listen. About... Yeah, we didn't just have to listen to Charlie like sing it like. Like, like, just like hot, like acapella that we actually saw the bad performance, which was pretty cool. Yeah. I, they kind of reverse engineered that cause that was in the pilot and they hadn't written that song yet. <laughs> and so the way he sings it is actually a different melody than, than the actual song. <laughs> it's kind of similar, but I think they kind of had to build off of that, but he did like this, you all everybody, you know, this big, <laughs> big falsetto thing. Man, and I feel it like doesn't, it does, it's not the same song. This is supposed to be a Stargirl interview, and it just became, like, a lost interview. I mean, how are you, how are you not going to talk about lost? <laughs> Man, like, I'm sure, like, because I was talking to you about this before, like, the preamble. I mean, that was that was the show, right? Like, that was the show yeah. that everyone watched. And I was like, what are the first, like, that was a big phenomenon at the time. Too. Oh, yeah. It was nuts. It was, uh, it was on billboards all over town, and it was just crazy. Like, when I shot it, I didn't know it was going to be, I knew there was a ton of money behind it. I knew it was, like, really... They were pumping a lot behind it, but then I, it, you know, when it actually like aired, it was it was a huge hit. When I was on the island shooting episode seven or whatever it was that I was in, they showed me the pilot. I hadn't seen the pilot. And I was like, oh my god, this show's going to be huge. So it was it was exciting to be a part of it, especially for you know a few years. Get it back to to Star Girl. Star Girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well. First of all, man, like Star Girl, like I've been, I've been interviewing, I've been really grateful. I've been interviewing a lot of the cast of Star Girl, which is really uh -huh. awesome. Um, and I talk about it with all of them as well. I mean, it looks so cool, man. Like the look yeah, of the totally. show is so awesome. Oh yeah, it's it's a, it's amazing. I mean, it's it's just to be on a show like that. You know, I, I posted something on Instagram yesterday of this this video I took where I was I was working with my stunt double. He was teaching me some stuff and. And then uh, we we got in this golf cart and we ride we ride through the uh, the stages and it's just massive and it goes on and on and on and on all the sets that they built and then that was only that was only one of two stages so just getting there and realizing like oh my god this is enormous and they have a twenty foot robot that they actually built yeah like Jake Jake Austin Walker like was Henry King like he was talking yeah, about yeah. that he's like Stripe is like not CGI like it's a robot yeah well it is CGI but it's also but, but they actually like made yeah. like it's there's actually like yeah, yeah. um yeah so it, it's uh it, it's just incredible to be on something that that of that scope I mean it's just so rare that you get it's like being on a big budget superhero film but it's a series you know no absolutely I mean, we mentioned in the preamble about the suit um specifically the mask of Sportsmaster. yeah, and I, yeah. I feel like I'm biased because I'm from Canada and I'm a hockey fan oh right? yeah right yeah. but like it's the coolest thing ever it's oh yeah the it's the coolest it's... thing on the show <laughs> I I, I tend to agree, but I'm biased, you know? I'm biased, I, I've said like, this... it's so cool looking. And then yeah. our man calls you Gretzky, which is like the best line of the whole thing. He calls me Jason Voorhees first, and then he calls me Gretzky. So I love that. I love that they, the thing I love about the show is it's, it's, it's very tongue in cheek. Like they make fun of the golden age DC names and it, it's great because it's very self-conscious, you know? And it walks this fine line between like danger and you know campiness that that it never goes too far into campiness, and that's what I love about our last episode with the whole fight scene because all of a sudden they have a they have a you know their first mission and they just get their butts kicked and by these two insane maniacs that can like run up walls and flip and 
it, it, it makes it suddenly like, oh my God, this is real. Absolutely. And I love that they did that, that they're just these bumbling teenagers that all of a sudden get themselves in, get themselves in way over their head. It's, it's really a smart choice. No, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. And, but like the thing is we kind of, we, we, we were introduced to your character like right away and you make an impact right away with your like <laughs> encounters with Luke Wilson. You know what I mean? Like yeah. right away that the, like people like kind of fall in love with your character. So like wh when you were kind of like, when you got the role and they told you what it was going to be the non sports master aspects of it, right? Like we are not yeah. a super villain. Like what was like the description? Like what, the, what were they looking for? What did you bring to it? Like, what was that like? They didn't tell you much. They, they didn't, they didn't like, I didn't even know what I didn't, I hadn't heard of star girl. Like I haven't read comic books since I was probably 13 and I wasn't up on star girl. So I didn't know any of the characters, but furthermore in the audition size, they didn't say the real names of the characters because they were trying to keep it under wraps. So I read for this character uh, like Scott Miller or something like that. And, and I had the scene where I first meet Luke Wilson. It was a little different, but I had that scene. And then I had a scene that was, that's not actually in the series. They do that a lot for audition size. They'll, they'll just have the writers write, write a scene so that they can just see if the actor can pull off the, you know, different aspects of the character. For sure. So the first scene was sort of this cocky, you know, just, just this meathead, you know, who's yeah. just full of himself, friendly, nice, but, but just kind of like this passive, has this passive aggressive, like the kind of guy that'll try to crush your hand when you shake his hand, you know? Uh, but, but seems kind of harmless. Like he comes into the, Jim and he works him out and like he 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 genuinely wants Pat to get into shape. He genuinely wants you know him to experience like his passion for fitness. But then you find out oh he's a total psychopath. Absolutely. And I love that. So they didn't tell me. They, so the second scene they had written was about was basically that psychopath side. And I and it was a good scene. It wasn't in the. It didn't end up in, being in the series. Um, but. But it was it was basically to show the danger of this guy too that he's that he's really dangerous. You know, you're 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 probably my fa my second favorite character. I apologize because Mike Duggan, Trey Romano, is like the oh, best. Oh, he's character. great. He's I've interviewed him too. Like he's so he's so funny on the show. He's like a he's like a forty year old man in a kid's <laughs> body, teenage body. Man, um, it's he's yeah. got like this confidence and the swag too, right? Where he's just playing this younger brother. Yeah, and he's from Atlanta. But he has this like New York accent. It's like, where did you, where, what? It's so funny. But the cast um, and crew is really, really amazing. You look at the Injustice Society, you look at the Justice Society. It's oh, like, yeah. like, like, the, like from the top to the bottom, there's so many cool people that are in this show. Yeah, it's, it was, it was a, a few actors that I had known from just my years of being in the business. And then it was a lot of people I didn't know. And the funny thing is, like, the Injustice Society is like the nicest group of people you've ever met. Like, they're just the coolest. <laughs> funniest most chill people and we just had a great time together we're at we have like a whatsapp thread where we send each other funny stuff and um just great people and we we had a blast and you know the show was very piecemeal so i worked most with uh with luke wilson and with uh joy because you know she plays my wife and joy and i just that hit it off right away and she has two kids i have two kids so we we have that parenting thing in common and you know, we were just over, it was just cool to be with someone that was as excited as you were about being on this show and getting to play a super villain and getting to enter the DC universe and, you know, all that that entails. And we're starting to see it now as it comes out, like all the fans and it, it's just, it's, it's so much fun. The fandom, you know, I was is, really in the fandom's awesome. And I saw on your Instagram too, um, someone, there's this, there's this fan that po he does, he creates custom Legos. Yeah, two. There's two different people that do that. That's the cool. That's so cool. You don't understand. Like, I love that stuff. It's. So, I just geek out over it. I mean, the idea of having a Lego of your character, the idea of having a, you know, maybe one day an action figure. I just love that stuff. I used to collect action figures when I was a kid, and like, it's 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 just a dream. And to get to play a character that's both funny and like a badass is awesome. That's soon, and man. to get you and to get to play on that, you know can't remember if we had started yet but you were talking about hockey and you were talking about sports parents and in yeah. canada you were saying yeah so yeah. well no i'll bring it up for sure like so like this yeah so like that is a realistic encounter when we kind of introduce we're introduced to you guys as student athlete parents with a coach you know what i mean yeah 
Like, how many times does that happen? An argument, like, Mike, uh, I want you need to give him more playing time. Like, it happens all the time. All the time. And I, lo- I just, it's so, I mean, it's a real thing. And they just <laughs> took that and they slightly exaggerated it. So we, we, we slightly actually exaggerated baseball bat to the head. That's what you call a <laughs> But how, no, but like, what I mean by slightly is like, those parents want to do that. They all want to kill the, the people that like benches their kid or gives a the ref that gives a bad call or whatever. Like they want to do that. For sure. And you see stories about parents that fist fight with refs and fist fight with coaches and other parents. It's insane. And the coach on the show thinks he's ready for you guys too. Eh? He's Don't, like, I know. Yeah, he has no idea what's... that like I'm really going <laughs> to use this bat. You don't understand. Like we're actually not here to negotiate. You're going to be in the ground. He's tonight. like, listen, I'm not stupid. I know what's going on here. All right. It's it's so great. It's such a great character. The character, the way they write that is so, it's just so funny. And that's, that is like, for me as an actor, my sweet spot of like dark humor, really dark humor. You know, it's, it's the funnest thing in the world to play. And it's like, it's just like, really, I've said this many times, like throughout the series, you know, if I could have picked one character on that show, it would definitely be the one I got because he's the funnest to play because he's just, a, he's a, he's insane and he's a badass and he's funny. And like know? the super villain aspect of it is so cool, but also like when he's not a super villain, it's really cool too. Like there, it's all, he's yeah. all around cool basically. Yeah. I mean, he's crazy, but he's like, he's yeah. likable in a crazy way, but yeah. So it's, and it gets cooler as it goes on. I'm not going to give any spoilers. Yeah. But, Cause the, the yeah. show's still going on right now, which is awesome. Like, and, it's, and yeah, it's just getting not, warmed up. Yeah. We're all getting warmed up and people are like going crazy over the show. Like it's awesome to see. Oh, so check this out. Uh, I just, my friend called me today and said, Howard Stern watches the show. You know who Howard Stern is, right? Of course. Yeah. Well, I don't know Canada if that's a, if, he, if he's a big name up there, but yeah. So I, he calls me and he's like, He's like, isn't the show you're on right now, Star? He's a he's a cinematographer. He's like, isn't the show you're on right now, Star Girl? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh my god, Howard Stern was just talking about the show. He watches every episode, and I listened to it, and he talked about it for almost five minutes. It That's was crazy. nuts. Yeah, it was nuts. The only thing too is there's a show on. There's also like a movie on Disney Channel called Disney Star show. Girl no. on Disney it, Plus. Sorry, it was a, a movie. Yeah, a movie. Yeah. But so there's it came I, and went um fortunately it didn't come out at the exact same time but that always happens that always happens yeah but they're sure. obviously totally unrelated no they're not they're not related but i like you said the timing was not like super similar but it was kind of similar so they, they there was some overlap yeah yeah. But, yeah well neil thank you so much for coming on pop alternative man oh it was my pleasure man i could talk for days about star girl no absolutely well maybe not days but yeah. <laughs> um you gotta get you got I gotta find out when like fans are gonna start making replicas of that mask, man, the Sportsmaster mask. Let me know. I, I gonna, somebody already reached out to me and was like, uh, you know, you get all these DMs and all these people are like, you know, I love your character and like I I'm gonna dress as sport. Now I know what I'm gonna wear at my next Comic Con and and we were joking about that during the show. We were like, if this show is as big as we think it's gonna be, like there's gonna be people dressed up like us at at comic cons and I, I just love that stuff i hope i hope it continues to grow its audience and you know absolutely it's sort of so they can watch i mean episode seven will come out next week but like like your episode was the one that just kind of got released basically episode six i believe yeah and they can watch it on dc universe and then it replays on the cw as well yeah, well, it's it, yeah. So originally the show was for DC Universe, so they didn't have any commercial breaks or anything. But then CW wanted it, and they they had to like cut it down a little bit. So I prefer watching it on DC because you get to see it no commercials, yep. which is the way it was originally written. Yep. Um, and and there's scenes that are not in the original, or not in the CW version. So. For sure. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything, Neil? My handle is at Neil E. Hopkins, I think. Just look me up. I, I, I don't want to misquote. I don't. I haven't like looked at what my actual handle. I think it's Neil E. Hopkins. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the success so far. We hope to see more Sportsmaster on, on Stargirl, man. Thanks, man. I hope you do, too. Absolutely. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Neil Hopkins and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.